Good morning, thank you for joining us today. My name is Hannah Booth and I'm the Communications Manager here at MorePay. It's my pleasure to introduce this morning's session to you, which is the truth about hybrid working. In the wake of the COVID pandemic, many businesses across the world have embraced hybrid working to varying degrees, whilst others have shunned it completely. In today's webinar, we're going to question whether hybrid working is here to stay or whether it's merely a phase that businesses will grow out of. A couple of points to run through before we do get started with this morning's session. First of all, you'll have noticed that your microphone is on mute, but we do want to hear from you, especially for the live Q&A at the end of the webinar. So please do drop your questions into the question panel shown here. We've had an incredible response to the webinar, so I imagine that we will get lots of questions, but our expert Michelle will do her best to work through as many as she can. Another note, if you are facing any technical difficulties, don't worry too much because this afternoon we will be sending out a recording of the webinar and also a copy of the slides, so you will have that to refer to. However, if you are facing any technical difficulties, please do flag it in the question panel because if lots of them come flooding through, I'll know there's an issue at our end and I can do my best to fix it for you. And moving on to the agenda for this morning, Michelle will start off by examining some recent research on the uptake of hybrid working and why some employees are still reluctant to go into the workplace on a regular basis. She'll then discuss some of the pros and cons of hybrid working from both an employer's and employee's perspective. Michelle will also look at how the current energy crisis could affect the hybrid working model before also analysing the effect of hybrid working on both Gen Z and also women. Finally, Michelle will walk you through some of the tools that can help you to make hybrid working a success within your business. Before I hand over to Michelle, I'm conscious that we will have people on this morning's webinar that aren't familiar with more pay, so I'll give a very brief introduction. We provide payroll and HR software, as well as outsourcing services to UK businesses. We've been around since 1966, have all the accreditations you'd expect, and we're rated excellent on Trustpilot. Our promise is to make payroll and HR easy, and here's how we do it. We built payroll and HR software that's easy. We deliver quality outsourcing options, and all of this means worry-free compliance for businesses. On the slide, you can see some of the businesses who trust us to take care of their HR and payroll. So that's enough about us. Let's meet the presenter for this morning. If you've attended some of our webinars in the past, you'll be familiar with Michelle. Michelle is our HR Technology and Services Director and has been with MorePay since 2017. Michelle is CIPD qualified with over 18 years of both operational and strategic HR experience. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Hannah, and good morning to everyone on the webinar. I'll now hand over to Michelle and she will take you through this morning's session on hybrid working. Thanks, Michelle. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, just a slight word of warning. I have picked up a um, an autumn bug um, of a, a bit of a cough and a cold, completely non-COVID related, but if I do go on mute, it's it's just because uh, I'm <laughs> I need to cough. So please do accept my apologies in advance if that happens. Um, but on to the, the topic at hand around hybrid working. Um, I think before COVID happened, um, hybrid working was something we'd heard about, but it wasn't very um it wasn't very prevalent in workplaces and wasn't particularly popular. And I don't think in many instances there'd been a huge um, thought to it. Um, but it is something that we all know about now. And the question that I want to start with is, is hybrid working here to stay? Um, I think the questions that we need to think about is, how can a business maximise the best of both worlds in a hybrid working model? With a new way of working, what then is the office for? What are the benefits of coming into an office from an employee's perspective versus staying at home? And how does remote working impact on an employee's mental health? So if I talk through some of the, the, the processes and thought processes behind this, I think in general, in the wake of the COVID pandemic, many businesses across the world have really embraced hybrid working, but to varying degrees, because it does depend on the type of business that you've got and whether that you can accommodate it. 
but where it has been accommodated it is it here to stay um or is it just merely a phase that we're going to grow out of and we'll gradually move back to the office it's quite difficult to think about all the complexities around it and that's the sort of things we want to talk to you in this webinar about how to navigate the complexities of this but maximize what we're calling the best of both worlds so the hybrid working model is really what is described as the best of both world, worlds and it's a big management question at the moment it means that many pro organizations are actually still in the process of figuring out what this means for them and what it means for their employees and really looking back on the past few months to past 12 months of potential hybrid working and, and what has that meant for their business. Um, Consultancy Advanced Workplace Associated, Associates actually surveyed 43 offices in the UK which represent nearly 50,000 people in June and July this year and they found that UK workers are going into the office just an average of 1.5 days a week um, and this really is despite some business leaders trying to persuade colleagues to spend more time in the office but most interestingly, only around 30% of those surveyed are actually going into the office on a Friday. Now, if we think about some of the business leaders who are trying to persuade colleagues to spend more time in the office, what are those results? What are the results of people being in the office, whether that's one and a half um, days or less? The results really have been mixed. So Apple's chief executive, Tim Cook, has made more than one attempt to try and introduce a policy of three fixed days in the office but that's actually been met with resistance each time he's tried this and that is having a wider impact on the business but essentially the benefits for employees of coming into the business has to be greater than the saving um, in terms of energy time money by not commuting and they're the sort of things that we need to think about so the next slides that we're going to go on to in a moment are talking about pros and cons but in general, managers need to consider what work is best done when people are together versus when the people are a partner at home. And if people are struggling with hybrid working, um, what does that mean for them? Are they only coming into the office for more of a social gathering or for all staff meetings, or are they actually there doing their work as well? Problems can include things like transport expense and face-to-face -face meetings being more efficient um, or less efficient than on teams. And they're all the things that that, that we really need to think about. So if we go on to the next slide then, this is going to start to talk a little bit more about the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, here are some of the things on here that we think, um, and, and we've done this ourselves in our own office, we're, we're in a hybrid working model at the moment, that, that we're portraying our, our experience as well as some of the research out there. It can be known to increase productivity um so productivity both in the office and at home because both of those are more limited it can mean that um productivity is increased and therefore um and therefore staff are getting more done in the time that they've got available and are using their time more wisely and more effective there can be a cost saving for both employers and employees so for employers, whether that's on um, the actual rent of the accommodation or whether that's on heating, lighting, electricity, et cetera, which is particularly important in the moment and we'll come on to in a little bit. Um, that's something for employers to think about. Can they use their office space um, more cost effectively? And then for employees, um, again, we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail, but they can be saving money on the commute. Um, um, and saving money that they would normally spend in the office on lunches, coffees, etc. <clears throat> this is coupled with time saving for employees, and often that can give people a, a, a real um, a real boost in terms of the time that they're saving on commuting, helping them be more productive when they are actually working. It just generally gives employees a greater flexibility, um, thinking about the flexibility that they might have in terms of their um, home life and responsibilities they've got and a, a, a fitting work around those and if they feel that they're getting that great flexibility there is a chance that they're going to give more to the organization and feel that they're more supported um, and more valued in the organization and there is the overall sort of improved work-life balance um, that people get from from looking at both of these I think overall though when you add all these together these can add up to an improvement in company culture 
we've really seen a shift in some areas moving away from a bit more of a strict or regimented culture that we maybe have seen in the past um, and this greater degree of flexibility and um, understanding of work-life balance i think one of the things that definitely came out from covid was a bit of a blurred line between work and home life when it feels like a long time ago now but we were back in the throes of things like homeschooling just excuse me for one second Apologies. Um, when we were in the throes of homeschooling um, and people were at home with children at home and not able to get any childcare, that really did break down some of those boundaries that may have been regimented before. And I think we can look to the positives of that. If we go on to the next slide, then to make sure that we look at the balances of both arguments. So the cons of, of hybrid work in them. Um, some of them are actually the complete opposite to the pros but i think in this instance it's really important that we give you the balance of those one of the first things i'd talk about is potential difficulties in building relationships with colleagues it was kind of kind of a given and something we're all used to about building relationships with colleagues while we were in the office or the workplace that the quick chats over the desk um the chats around the the, the tea or coffee machines the breakout areas etc and companies have really had to think about how you replace that when um, you're working remotely. So if people are only in the office once or twice a week, how do you make sure that those relationships with colleagues do continue? And it's particularly important to think about the people who have started either during COVID when you were home working or during the hybrid working model who have never experienced um, you know, full time or five days in the office. Um, what does that mean for them and what sort of things can you put in place because that could really be a disadvantage if you don't think about it and um, whilst there are benefits to mental health in terms of work-life balance and flexibility it can come with negative impacts on mental health and one of the things i would call out is where there is negative impacts on mental health it can be more difficult for managers to see these impacts because you are not sat in front of people you can't pick up on the minor cues that you might have have noticed from somebody um, whilst you sat opposite them so you've got to be much more engaged with your staff in um in a different way and one of those things could be if people are at home and not in the office as much depending on their personality depending on their home life perhaps it might lead to feelings of exclusion and isolation for them and um, so it's definitely something that, that you need to consider and it's just general this all to like is there a lack of human engagement that people get obviously they might be able to talk over microsoft teams or zoom or whatever whatever it is you have in your workplace but that lack of, of spontaneous human engagement that you get in the office is that having a negative impact if they're only having that once or twice a week it is said that it could hinder career progression um, and that is something to think about whilst they're not in the office every day are people understanding what they need to do for their development how they can get involved um, in other areas of the business other projects and um, how are we communicating advanced career opportunities it really is thinking about a different way of doing things so it isn't just a case of okay we're moving to hybrid working everyone's working x amount of time in the office and x amount at home it's thinking about all these pros and cons that sit behind it and um, and I think the last point to, to kind of, of talk about is really about um, what you see on there about it being potentially emotionally exhausting. So research has actually found that some people are finding the one day in, one day out routine quite jarring. Employees almost feel they've got two workplaces to maintain, one in the office and one at home. Hybrid working involves planning this stop start routine. And this could be everything from as simple as making sure you take your laptop to and from the office every day remembering important things where you've left them getting into the office realizing you've left a document on your desk at home and um, it's, it's it's a lot sometimes for people to cope with and that's where the, the, the phrase emotionally exhausting it's a bit of a psychological shift, shift because you are changing the setting either every day or every couple of days and some employees might find that tiring or not feel settled um, and again that's something to think about in terms of a con and um, how would you overcome that I think just just in general um it's really thinking about 
this presentation really being not saying what's right and wrong it's just admitting and understanding that hybrid working is here a lot of companies have seen the benefits from it and have introduced it but it's helping you now we're a few months down the line potentially a year down the line with this helping you look at what the best solutions are with the business with you having all the facts on front of you and everything you need to consider because if you are going to do it to help you make it successful so if we just the next slide please this to me is a really important thing for us to notice at the moment there won't be one of us on the call who is immune to what is happening out in the economic climate at the moment and we're very different place to where we were a year ago so if i take more pay where where we work as an example this time last year we started trialing hybrid working um, and we embarked on a three-month trial to see how it would go um, then obviously we all got sent home again over winter so that put a stop to it and um, so things did change but 12 months ago we couldn't have envisaged the energy crisis that is upon us at the moment and the whole cost of living um, impact on both workplaces and employees but a recent survey which polled more than a thousand respondents actually revealed that more than four in five employees that's about 85 percent of employees found the idea of actually working from the office more appealing amid the cost of living crisis. Nearly half of the respondents said that they would be more likely to commute into the office to alleviate the impact of high energy bills, with 15% claiming they would choose to work from, home, work from the office for the whole of the winter to overcome this. So I think the key question employees will be asking themselves is how much does it cost for me to work in the office versus work from home? And they may be coming to you with this and asking for your help and input as well and this is is this going to be a driver in whether employees continue to work from home or from the office i think to, to unpack this a little bit more there are compromises that are to be made here we know that employees value the extra time from not commuting a reduction in commuted related stress along with the money that they save in commuting so this is going to be part of the balancing act that employees are going to undertake, but it is going to vary from one employee to another. It has been documented, as we sort of talked about, that socioeconomic circumstances will be a driver in how people feel about home working uh, versus office working over the coming, coming months. Um, and it's going to be a product of the circumstances which we are going to find ourselves in for the foreseeable future. Employees are going to be working up, working out whether it's working from home or going to the office is more cost effective because on one hand as I said you've got the cost of heating your own home but then the others you've got the cost of fuel train fares lunches buying coffee etc add into that that parents too are facing complicated decisions um, the UK has um, and I speak from experience here the most probably one of the most expensive childcare setups in Europe and for many working from home has enabled them to save costs in some way on childcare, whether that's kind of wraparound care because there's a little more flexibility um, and potentially they've not needed to travel. But this winter, will that cost effectiveness mean enough that, that it will outweigh them going into the office? And I think all we can say here is that line managers and businesses need to be sensitive to this economic backdrop. So if you've got employees, if you've set up a hybrid working uh, policy, um, or procedure that you've got in place at the moment and employees are coming to you asking to come into the office a little bit more look at that individual circumstance look at the circumstance overall what your employee employer um the the setup is in the offices and can you accommodate that um and but also understand that sometimes employees might be quite embarrassed to talk about financial issues and how they can approach you about that it's just something to bear in mind that hybrid working models that were set up a year ago or even earlier this year, the land has changed in the background and it's very important for you to think about that um, and encourage employees to come forward to you if they do have a problem that they want to talk about. On to the next. So I just wanted to quickly touch on um, Gen Z employees and how it's impacting their ability to progress and um, integrate and, and be promoted in the workplace now 
there are some employees from the most recent generation that have actually never worked in an office environment on a full-time basis. Hybrid working is actually proving quite popular with, with Gen Z employees because generally, and then I am talking generally, they're more technologically adept and they value the flexibility it offers. But there is evidence that suggests that this demographic are missing out on crucial things like mentoring through the early stages of the career and, and some of the interactions that they would get from being in the office. So I think it's worth us just, just looking at that a bit more. I think it is natural, and as I said, this is very general for younger workers to communicate um, a lot more through technology. If you think about the way that But to bear in mind, though, that working from home could mean that they are missing out on some opportunities. And how do you bring those opportunities to them? So time in the workplace does help build deeper, more collaborative um, relationships with colleagues. And I think it's important to think how you can bring those JEDSEN employees along. So if you are in a hybrid working model, making sure that when they are coming in the office, that you are utilizing that time to help them with the things that they might be missing out on. Statistics are also showing though that young workers are far less likely to have good home working set up, potentially cramped environments, um, living with housemates, they've not necessarily got the right desk or, um, or, uh, or office set up. You know, we've heard of younger employees who actually are sat on their bed uh, with their laptop on their knee. How can you help them with that? Is there a way that you can talk to them that whilst they are at home, they're in the, the, the correct environment? And then when they're in their office, how you're helping them get the most out of it? Again, this is just all things for you to, to sort of think about when, when you, you're planning the future for it. I think one of the things that's important when we've looked at the research when we were preparing this webinar is that the professor of management at Oxford University, a, a guy called Michael Smets, actually commented that we have a generation of young workers in some respects who are desperate to return to their office to just to escape these unproductive home uh, um, working environments and to overcome the isolation and learn. Um, but we also have senior staff who enjoy the comforts of their home office. So how are the organisations going to bring them together whilst Gen Z may be used to it, um, may be um, used to the technology side of it, they may want a bit more of that to help them advance in their careers. And it's just balancing all those. So, you know, this webinar is just really trying to pull all those strings together and get you to think about all the aspects of it and how you're making sure that your employees are still getting the best out of the jobs they're doing, feeling the worth, feeling the value, not feeling isolated and getting that right flexibility. On the next slide then, we're just going to talk a little bit more um, about the impact that this can have um, on specific groups. We've talked about Gen Z, but I think it's important to think about the impact that this can have on equality, particularly gender equality. And there is a thought uh, train that is hybrid working disadvantaging women. So how is the hybrid working model impacting women's ability to progress and be promoted in the workplace? There's been some great advan uh, um, sort of advantages and strides made over the past sort of 20 or so years. And again, it's something to think about that making sure that everything you've got in place around hybrid working doesn't then lead to a disadvantage. Hybrid working is proving popular with men and women alike. There's no denying that both, um, both genders um, are seeing um, benefits uh, to this but research is showing that 10% more women are favouring this working arrangement and often because this is helping with flexibility and improving their work-life balance but the contrary to that is suggesting that hybrid working can hinder a woman's career progression because there's an exclusion from face-to-face -face meetings maybe not having significant um, or sufficient exposure to leadership teams and it's really a case of making sure that all that progress we've made isn't hindered by this. Um, I think it's just something to think about. Does hybrid working inherently disadvantage women? 
and where you think it might be disadvantaging women, what are the fixes to make sure that we plug those gaps um, and think about how we can work it in the future. According to Deloitte's 2022 Women at Work study, about 60% of women actually said that in the hybrid work environment, despite all the benefits that come with it, they do feel they've been excluded from maybe some important meetings um, that they might have been included in if they were in the office. And then almost half of them are saying that they've not had enough exposure to leaders, which in the past has helped them progress with their career. So it's thinking about how you can you can get over that, whether it's thinking about mentors, thinking about um, career progression talks, making sure that those spontaneous things that happen in the office are still happening, that everyone who needs to be included is included. So on to the last slide before we go on to questions. I know that we've given you a lot to think about um, and when, you, when you're cramming all this into a, a half an hour webinar, it, it can be quite difficult because there's so much research on it. And despite the fact that, that we've been talking about hybrid working for you know a, a, at least over a year now, it is still a relatively new topic. And I think we are all as professionals in HR and health and safety and as businesses still finding our feet with it. There isn't one size fits all answer. So the point of this presentation was really to just give you food for thought in terms of, of going back and thinking about how you can make the most of it in your workplace if you're going to continue with this, but also not expecting that because you put hybrid working in place that that's it forever and you need to, never need to revisit again. Times may change, um, situations may change. I don't think any of us would have quite predicted the impact the cost of living crisis is having. So already 12 months later, as we've said, something else is impacting it. But just to really finish on some practical notes and really help you think about the tools that you could put in place to help make it work. The first one we're talking about is kind of a good virtual landscape in the background, which will consist of a variety of communication platforms, including things like an instant message platform, such as Teams, Zoom or other things like Slack, making sure that people have the option to drop a quick note to somebody um, in the same way that when they're in the office, they would pop their head over the desk or, or wander over to somebody else. How can they maintain that that instant messaging? Um, an instant contact that, that you regularly need. You might also want to look at some more project management tools. So because team members are collaborating from the office and from home um, and work will flow between the two, companies may benefit from using a bit more of a dynamic project management tool, which lends itself to communicating from anywhere. Um, so when I was talking before about documents um, that you might go into the office and think oh, I've left that at home or you go home and think I've left it in the office. If you're working on more of a project management type tool where everything can be um, secured and stored and accessed from anywhere, that may really help that flow of work when you are changing um, and, and changing setup on a day in, day out or two day in, two day out basis. Um, Think about the software that you've got in, particularly HR software. Have employees got the ability to self-serve in the right way, to understand um, everything they need to know about their kind of working environment from a HR software point of view. Obviously, more pay have the HR software. That's a big part of our offering um, across payroll um, and HR. But with the employee self-service, it's like things like quick access to pay slips, booking leave submitting timesheets, expenses, keeping all records. Is there a mobile app that they can use and access? And again, they can access it at home or at work and it makes no difference and they don't feel that one is more difficult to the other and is helping them with that flow of transition. Um, another thing that, that may seem obvious, but allowing them to book um, meeting rooms. So a lot of consideration is put and should be put into your staff's home working setup. Don't neglect that office space. If you've got the office space there, make sure that it is still being used to the best, um, the best of its, you know, that it's got to offer. Um, if you want the office to be used for collaboration, make it easy for staff to set up those face to face meetings, whether that means now you, you introduce breakout areas for people to go and have a quick coffee and a chat or whether you've got actual meeting rooms and you've got a booking system for those meeting rooms or a combination of both. Think about how when you are having that face to face time 
that you're making it as easy for the employees to do that. So an employee could sit at home and think, oh, when I'm in the office next week, I'll book a meeting in with X person and we'll, we'll get in X room because we need the projector. Thinking about the tools that you can put in place. And what other emerging technologies are going to come out in the future that will help with hybrid working? This really is going to be an ever continuing model of learning, um, re-evaluating, reassessing and improving. Um, and I think this will stay in place for a long time. I think elements of hybrid working in general will stay. We've seen the benefits along with the cons, but if you know the cons, you can put in things to mitigate that. Um, but even on this journey, it isn't just going to be, we've put it in place. This is what we said at the beginning and that will stay. The biggest piece of advice that we could give you is to keep refreshing it, keep reviewing it. And all the things that we've talked about here, um, and as Hannah said before, the slides and the recording will be available for you to look back on. Think about those points when you are reviewing it. And that kind of brings us to the end of the formal slides um, and time for questions. If I pass back to Hannah to see what questions have come in. Thank you, Michelle. Please do keep dropping your questions into the question panel and we will work through them. So the first question we've received is, do you need to change employment contracts if you adopt a hybrid working model? Um, really good question. You don't have to. Um, there's plenty of companies who haven't changed employment contracts uh, formally. What they have done is introduced a hybrid working policy. Um, a lot of companies have, like our own have done trials on it, taken feedback, really engaged and got the buy-in from the organisation um, and found out what really works for them. And if you can do it like that with a hybrid working policy, then there isn't necessarily the need to change the employment contracts. Um, I think the, the, the cons that come with changing the contracts is it can be quite fixed. And if you wanted to adapt it again, that would make it more difficult. So, you know, during the cost of living crisis, if you've got an employee who wants to come in the office four days a week, as opposed to the two that you set originally, and that's written in the contract, you know, you're looking back at, do we need to change that contract again? Um, so not putting it in the contract allows both you and the employee a bit more, a bit more flexibility. But, you know, if there's a very specific question that you've got around that, then do speak to either the more pay team, if you're one of our customers, and we can help guide you through that or to your, your HR team or HR professionals that you work with. Thanks, Michelle. That's really useful. Moving on to the next question, we've got what's the main differences between flexible working arrangements and hybrid working arrangements? Um, well, hybrid working is a type of flexible working. Um, that's kind of the, the, the first point to make. But many companies have had flexible working policies in place for many, many years um, uh, aligned to the, the legalities and law behind this. Um, but it is a type of flexible working. Um, so even in the past, you could have had somebody um, pre-COVID who put flexible working request in to work X amount of time at home and X amount of time in the office. <coughs> if someone puts a flexible working request in, you are obliged to follow your policy, to follow the legalities and the law behind it, to hold the meetings, to respond to them, and to give them the full and formal um, responses as required. Um, if you have a hybrid working model that you are blanket um, sort of approaching across your whole business, um, that does not need to go through that process with, with everybody. And um, it could just be a policy that you're putting in place. But there, there is a bit of a distinct difference. Um, but it's important to say that aside from any hybrid working policy that you've got in place, if you do get a flexible working request, you're still obliged to hear that in the normal way. Thank you, Michelle. So the next question is, we're looking at implementing hybrid working. What if some employees don't want to work in a hybrid way and want to continue to work in the office on a full time basis? And likewise, what if some employees want to work from home on a full time basis? How would we address these issues? Yeah. It, it is difficult to, to sort of blanket please everybody. Um, and I think you have to take it on a case by case basis. One of the most important things that, that I or more pay could recommend is a trial of hybrid work. And if you are looking to put hybrid working in place, trial it with the employees and get the employees feedback on it. Um, I've certainly seen cases where after COVID and after working from home, 
there were people who were very nervous about coming back into the office but actually during the trial with everything that was put in place to support them they found it easier um, and have kind of changed their minds around hybrid working um, what you've got to look at is the setup of your office if you've still got an office that's open five days a week and um, people from different teams are coming on on different days you know you've got to ask the question if somebody wants to come in five days a week can you accommodate it is there enough management cover over those five days um, so that people can come in five days and actually they can choose to override whatever your hybrid working model is um, and that's also to make sure you know things like that nobody's alone working in an office and you've got right the right things in place and um, if you are saving money by having offices shut on certain days and that may not be a request but you really need to understand what the driver is behind that employee's request um, and work to find a solution that, that that suits both in the same way if someone work, wants to work from home this is going to be very dependent full-time this is going to be very dependent on your business you may have the approach that actually it's okay if that person works from home but if you are saying you want everyone in the office hybrid working for a certain amount of times in the week again you need to sit down with that employee truly understand what is behind that and see if you can some, come to some sort of arrangement i guess what could happen on the back of that is an employee could put a flexible work and request in to work from home um five days a week and then you'd have to follow that procedure but it really is going to be down to your individual business what the circumstances are in the setup of hybrid working that you're doing and then talking to each of the individual employees but the biggest biggest um and a most useful thing is to try and bring them along on that journey communicate involve them in why you're doing this holding the trial getting feedback and um, that is much more likely to get a positive outcome thank you michelle moving on to the next question if we allow part-time employees to work in a hybrid model the line managers will rarely see them do we still have to permit this and um, you've got to make sure that you don't disadvantage um, part time workers in any way through this. And, and one of the ways that you can get around this is rather than talking about a number of days of a week, you could talk about percentage of time in the office. So if you were saying to all employees, we expect you to sort of spend 50 percent of your time in the office for a part time worker who only worked two days a week, that would mean one day in the office and one day at home. Um, I think it's important that we treat part-time workers as fairly as possible um, and make sure that they get the balance too and that there isn't anything that's potentially indirectly discriminatory towards them because they are part-time workers because although obviously part-time working is not necessarily a protected characteristic sometimes the things that sit behind it like gender are um, you've got to make sure that you don't disadvantage them but balance managers seeing them um, and they're not you know in the office more or less than a full-time person kind of work out the equivalence again work with that individual work on understanding um their motives explaining your motives get the buy-in and come to a sort of a balanced agreement with them thanks michelle so the next question is what have you guys more pay or seen other companies do perhaps some of your customers to make the most of the office space in a hybrid environment our main problem currently is that people aren't coming into the office because they simply don't see the benefit um i guess it goes back to some of the things that i've I, i've said before you know more pays experience this was a trial and a lot of communication forums and um, questionnaires surveys really involving the team in bringing them back um, and i've seen customers do a very similar thing one thing that we have supported customers on as well is writing a policy um, and advising and guiding them on how to best bring that policy in um, and i think that's that's the key to it is having very clear understanding of what you want to do why you want to do in it and bringing the employees along that can be one of the most tricky things is having people who are resistant to a hybrid working model and that's on both sides of the coin whether they want to work from home full-time or want to work in an office full-time both of those can be tricky um, but I think it's really important to kind of put a project plan in place for this and um, simply saying we are moving to hybrid working this is what hybrid working looks like and it's going to be effective from x day is not going to go down well 
And I think given everything that, that we've all been through throughout the pandemic and all the ups and downs and changes, um, this is another change for people to get used to. And it's about allowing people the time to get used to those changes. So say, for example, your um, aim is to have people in the office 50% of the time. Um, even after you've done a trial, maybe build it up so it's one day a week, then maybe two days a week, and, and just kind of work with work with the people, particularly those who are resistant, um, on, on encouraging them and supporting them and putting in place as many of the things that we've talked about to make that transition easier. Thank you, Michelle. We have got time just for one or two more questions. The next question is, going back to the part-time question earlier, they've said that um, our company has opted to have a minimum of two days in the office, regardless of whether anyone is part-time or not. And they have had one person raise concern, but they have pushed on with this arrangement because they feel that it's important from a relationship building perspective. And they feel that with one day a week in the office, you simply can't build those relationships, but they're saying that is there a risk of indirect discrimination through doing this? There potentially could be, um, and it, it's just important that 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 you know that in it, it, you know everything that I said before about the, the part-time working employees. It's about trying to come to that balance to make sure that you aren't um, disadvantaging somebody because of the hours that they work and potentially by uh, default of the, their gender that sits behind that. Um, if it is something that's very important, then I think it's it's really important to get that employee on board. Um, if they're really pushing back on it, then what I would suggest is that there's a more formal process put in place that, that's recorded, that the details are there. So if anything did come back that they were potentially disadvantaged, that you'd got the documentation to show the thought behind it, um what you considered what you didn't consider um and i really would seek advice on that particular case um just to make sure that if anything did come back that you've done everything you can um but my blanket thing would be really just to think that you're not not to disadvantage um either way um part-time employees that's not to say you can't um ask them to come in and you might have somebody who says i'm absolutely fine to come in on both the days that um both the days that I'm due to work, I'm absolutely fine in the office those two days with the rest of the team. So again, it's down to an individual, but where you've got an individual who's resistant, do take that seriously. Speak to a, uh, an HR professional and, and see what you can do to make sure that, that everything you need to do, you are covered for um, and you put in place everything that, that's right in terms of the legalities. Thank you, Michelle. So we'll move on to the final question now. Final question is, when implementing hybrid working, do all departments within the office, within the business have to be offered hybrid working or could you just offer it to departments where you see that it's most fitting? That's very dependent on your business and how your business operates. Um, you know, if you've got a manufacturing business, then you're not going to be able to offer the people who are on the manufacturing plant home uh, hybrid working when they need to be on site to do their job. But there might be people in the office that can have hybrid working. Um, so you've really got to look across all of your business, understand what can and cannot be done by hybrid working. And really only you can make those decisions and make sure you've got the business and justification. And then think about the implications of that. Is that going to be easily communicated um, across the business? One thing that needs to be really important is that whatever your senior leadership or senior management team consists of, is that you're all on the same page with it. So say you've got two office departments who run very similar things, but you've got one manager who says, I'm fine with hybrid work, and another manager who says, absolutely not, I want all my um, staff in um, because I think it's right that they're in. You've got to get your management team on the same page. Um, it can't become a personal um, sort of decision for a manager. Um, make sure that you're being fair across the departments in the best way that they can it may be that there is one department who's happy to come in a little bit more again that depends on individuals um, just really look at the types of work that these departments are doing um, and look across the board make sure that there's kind of an umbrella look over it um, about what is fair and what isn't because the worst thing that you want that, that could come out of a hybrid working policy is a ton of complaints you know 
even the extremes of grievances that people aren't being treated fairly. The hybrid working policies are trying to be introduced to mostly improve um, working life for people and help show the benefits that we did see of home working during COVID. Um, and the last thing you want to do as a business is, is, is bring the neg negativities that come with that. So make sure your team management team are all aligned on it. Um, but going back to the original question, yes, you can have different departments with different needs, but just make sure you're very clear on why there is a difference. Thank you, Michelle. So we will finish the questions there. Before we do finish today's session, I did want to give you a little bit more information on the HR services that we do offer and also employment law. We have an advice line that runs 24-7, 365 days a year. So no matter when an HR issue crops up, best practice employment law is always advice, is always available over the phone anytime delivered by our highly experienced team of qualified experts. On the slide, you can see a selection of our Trustpilot reviews. And as I did mention earlier, we are rated excellent on Trustpilot. So you can trust us to give you expert advice. If you'd like to find out more about our HR services offering, then do drop me a message in the question panel and I can arrange for one of my colleagues to contact you. And one final slide before we finish this morning, I'll quickly point you in the direction of our Knowledge Centre, which is easy to find in the menu on our website. It's packed with lots of useful resources, including our upcoming webinars, there's guides that are free to download, there's blogs on topical issues. So if you haven't already been on there, then please do take a look. I know that there'll be something useful on there for everyone. One last thing, we're always striving to improve our services, so we'd love to hear your thoughts on today's webinar. As you leave the session, a very short survey will appear on your screen and we'd appreciate it if you could take two minutes to complete it. So that's everything from us. As I mentioned earlier, we'll, we'll be sending out a copy of the presentation and also recording. You should receive that later on this afternoon. So that just leaves me to say thank you very much to Michelle for hosting today. And also thank you to all of you for joining and for all of your great questions.